In this lesson, what we're going to do is talk about the development of agricultural changes in Mao's China, specifically relating to the change from the creation of the APCs, the Agricultural Producers Cooperatives, uh, and the change from them into the creation of the People's Communes. We'll then also talk about some of the policies that were implemented in and around the People's uh, Communes to try and um, increase output for uh, agricultural production. And uh, I would be reticent to uh, to um, to note to people that uh, when we look at the different policies that we should keep them in mind for the next lesson because these were going to be arguments that led to uh, the creation of the great famine so we have to we have to just sort of link these two lessons together a little bit so according to mao the impact of collectivization was somewhat successful as such, he wanted to see more collectivization, essentially. He sought to increase the level of collective farming to establish much larger communes for agricultural work to take place. This would see the introduction of a policy that described uh, that is described by Mao as, quote, walking on two legs. Now, what this would do would organize peasants from APCs into communes. Now, these uh, communes would be used as a method to increase agricultural production, which would increase industrial output in conjunction with the five year plans that we'll look at in future lessons. And should therefore um, create a greater economic prosperity for for the state. Now, the communes themselves, known as the people's communes, were huge so you can see um how the uh, how the collectivization and the sort of collective households of of peasants working um together and pooling their labor together went from the mutual aid teams which were sort of around 10 uh, individuals in a household to the um to the APCs, the Agricultural Producers Cooperatives, which would be around 30 to 40. And then we have the People's Communes, which would total up to five and a half thousand households uh, at a time. The first of these communes uh, was uh, organized in July 1958 in the Henan province, and it was named after the uh, first satellite that was launched into space by the USSR. So it was known as the Sputnik Commune. And this was the first one that was created in 1958. Uh, it should be noted that um, around this time, the Great Famine begins. So we can start to see really a, a very clear link between the creation of the communes and the uh, and the devolving of the state of China into the worst famine that we've ever seen. When it comes to life within the communes, it should be noted that Mao wanted to see the communes to be a place of prosperous living and positive energy, essentially. Uh, he particularly believed that the creation of the communes would be positive for the lives of women who would be able to work collectively and work specifically when it came to the raising of children, uh, while, uh, while men would work on the farms and work in agricultural um, production. That is what Mao suggested and Mao thought would be the case with the creation of the people's communes. In reality, though, uh, the communes were incredibly harsh and uh, incredibly terrible places to live. Children were often uh, abandoned in poorly organized creches. Uh, these creches were also uh, contained um, very poorly qualified individuals, so they weren't being looked after properly. The parents of said children were uh, forced to work very long hours uh, to try and keep up with the agricultural demands that the state had set. Uh, the food and diets were very, very poor uh, for most people who lived in the communes. Agricultural production also didn't increase in any meaningful sense. So we have this problem where Mao is implementing such drastic policies of collectivization that on paper should lead to uh, an increase in production, at least if we were to believe the the the, the, the ideas of, of of communism and the ideas of of socialist theory and Mao's theory, um, they should increase in terms of uh, agricultural production. But things did not increase because uh, of the communes. So we have a problem that we have here that essentially the creation of the communes uh, was was pointless because it just made life more terrible for everybody who lived in them, and it didn't really make any meaningful um, improvements to agricultural production. Now, Mao refused to believe that the reason why there was no agricultural uh, increase in production uh, was uh, because of the creation of the communes. He believed it was because people were working, uh, who were working in the communes were stealing grain. And so we have a series of problems that begin to unfold in terms of the over-reporting of agricultural production. So essentially what began to take place was people were over-reporting the amount of uh, grain that had been produced by the different communes. 
which created a sense of productivity in terms of uh, from a top down level. The state believed that there was a lot of productivity, but it meant that there was a lot of grain requisitioning uh, towards these peasants, which would lead to famine. As a result of other problems as well, Mao organized what became known as the Four Pests Campaign because he believed that there were different pests like birds and, uh, and, other, and other wildlife creatures that were actually consuming all of the, 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 the agricultural products. And so therefore, the Four Pests Campaign was a campaign to try and exterminate pests that, that steal grain. And um, there was an emphasis placed on uh, making sure that birds wouldn't get the grain. It was incredible uh, to the point where you see they would uh, they would uh, essentially bang pots and pans and make a lot of loud, scary noises to try and keep the birds from uh, from landing anywhere near all of these um, farms. To the extent to which the birds would actually fall out of the sky because of exhaustion, um, because they couldn't because they couldn't actually land. It was incre incredible <laughs> the poor pest campaign. But the problem with the poor pest campaign was that they were trying to stop birds from getting at the grain but these birds were also eating insects and so the result of this was birds eating insects which uh, would then make things worse because those insects would allow locusts to eat uh, the harvest instead so the insects that were able to 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 kill and to eat the uh, locust or to eat any other kind of um uh, grain harvesting uh, insects uh, were being eaten by the birds who weren't able to eat the grain because of the four pest campaign which led to locusts just getting out the harvest instead and so we have just 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 a terrible idea just a, the worst possible idea um that mao um, possibly the worst idea that mao has ever ever came up with with the four pest campaign it was just incredibly incompetent on top of all this we see the abolition of private farming as well by the end of 1958 private land ownership was essentially outlawed as such it was claimed by the party that 99 percent of the population had been moved into these large communes now this was probably true because these large communes were as i said were incredibly huge and because private ownership of land was outlawed it made sense that within these uh, particular um agricultural areas that the, the vast majority or essentially every single person was part of a commune at some point there was also an abolition of livestock ownership they had to be owned by the collective by the whole commune uh, collectively so that they could work to pull their labor collectively uh, the party would then also denounce the private selling of agricultural produce so if it was caught if people uh, caught uh, were caught sorry uh, selling uh, their own products uh, privately they would uh, suggest that this was akin to what became known as rural capitalism and that this was also abolished as well and all of these factors came together to the cause of the great famine now one of the things that we haven't mentioned that we should mention in terms of agricultural practice was the adoption of the ideas of the soviet biologist uh, trofim lysenko now lysenko or the idea known as lysenkoism was a, a debunked uh, theory of agricultural production and as our farm production to try and uh, essentially use scientific methods to to make um, agricultural produce more uh, efficient uh, it turned out that this was all scientifically inaccurate it was uh, involving things such as um, believing in crop yields um, that would be increased if seeds were exposed to moisture and low temperature before they planted um, also beliefs in planting seeds very very close together uh, in order to increase the crop yields all of these things all of these things were debunked scientific ideas but mao believed in them and mao adopted these ideas um towards uh, uh towards the his own uh adoption of agricultural uh, produce and because they were not scientifically accurate ideas and because they were incorrect the result of this policy was not an increase in crop yields but a dramatic drop in crop yields which would contribute to the famine between 1958 and 1960. Now the next lesson we are going to talk about the famine in great detail we'll talk about uh, the some of the, the life during the famine the the amount of deaths during the famine as well as uh, who to blame for the famine and then the ending of the famine as well but two of these policies are cited quite heavily as being uh, two major causes of the great famine this uh, idea of lysenkoism the 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 scientifically debunked um, theories of crop yields as well as the four pest campaign as well and you could also make the claim that the creation of the communes also didn't help things in terms of the famine either we'll get into all of that in great detail in the next lesson